What's the biggest governmental freak up of your country's history? In recent history, our president, first female one at that, was brainwashed since birth by a Rasputin-like cult leader which led to a slew of influence peddling and corruption scandals. Not surprising she went to jail though, since every single president in our history has either been assassinated, sent to jail, had their family members close relatives sent to jail, or committed suicide. Long time ago, when every country in Europe still had proper monarchy, Poland effectively had democracy of nobles. There was a king, but he was powerless, much like modern monarchies, and the actual power was in hands of nobility. At the time it was very progressive. The problem? They had a rule, that in order to introduce a new law, everyone present had to agree. Everyone. Which means that one bribe jerk could just say nope, I don't want this and veto everything. This led to stagnation of law, which led to stagnation of economy, which led to conquest of Poland by neighbors. Ooh off we have a frick up every two weeks but I am going to tell this one. This is worth the read. Here in Costa Rica we had the concrete incident. We call it El Cementazo, which was something seemingly small that got from 0 to 100 real fricking quick. This one construction guy bought a crap ton of concrete, cement, however the frick it's called. He was building a big butt building and got insurance from a private company since the public national one rejected his project. It was more loss than gain and the project was big so yeah. Time goes on and guess what? Building crumbles. Someone freaking sneezed or something and it crumbled like dust. The streets around also crumbled. Everything on the 20 million national coin. Project crumbled to dust and now the insurance company was down bad. They couldn't pay 20 millions on the spot. The case was taken to court because of the impressive freak up and damage to property. Here is where we get spicy. Why did it crumble like that? It seems the concrete was awful quality and imported illegally from China. A concrete made to build houses fast for a lot of people brought to a rainy, tectonic country. It only took a bit of rain and an earthquake nobody felt to tear it down. How did the concrete got approved to enter if it gets monitored? The dude at the cargo let it through out the border, just walked through the front door. Because he had higher up instructions which himself had higher up instructions to let the guy pass, and so on and so on. In a matter of one day the whole cabinet was somehow involved on this incredibly big money scheme. By next day president and related. By night of that day people from past governments were found involved and before we knew it they had to hire new judges for the main judging branch because this chaos 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 the case took months and as you would expect it nothing of really big consequence happened. Politics people is still around. I think the one who ordered the concrete went to jail and got out after a bit because he harmed himself to get to the hospital. I still wonder why is people so shy to start a freaking revolution here I swear. Everything Italy. However one particular frick up by the government after the reunification was developing only the north, leaving the south poor and underdeveloped. This gap still exists today, after 150 plus years. Traveling north to south in Italy is indeed something of a shock. It feels like a whole other, much poorer, country. Not sure if it's the biggest but in Australia we had a boom in the mining industry and finally the gov decided to tax the mining companies that were making massive profits. The story goes that the gov put representatives of the biggest mining companies in a room and told them to come up with a tax for themselves. So they did. Of course if you come up with a tax then you know how to avoid it. It was reported that they paid zero dollars in the new tax in the first year. Could be recalling it wrong but generally speaking expecting an industry to tax themselves at a cost of profit is asking for a screw up. This sounds like precisely what a government owned by big business would do. Not surprised. Britain once managed to send a warship to Iceland rather than Ireland. Since then the RN has always written Iceland as Iceland. See, in all documents to avoid this mistake. This is not the worst but sure is the freak up est. Probably being allied with Hitler. It only brought us famine and my grandfather told me they had to leave their house every time they heard planes. Cause we got bombed by allies first and then by Nazis. Shooting down our own airline. Mistaking it for an American missile and as a result killing everyone on board they lied about it to the public for 3 straight days. Apparently there was a massive AIDS conference that was going to be attended by some top international experts on the issue who were on the plane as well. 
probably when our corrupt politicians privatized all our banks, sold them to their friends who, through blatant misconduct, caused the economic collapse in 2008. Some of those politicians responsible are still in politics. Just wonderful. From Iceland BTW. Leaving a massive amount of ammonium nitrate in the port in the center of the capital for 5 plus years that then exploded causing one of the largest non-nuclear explosions in history. I always imagine inspectors tiptoeing and saying, yep, it's still there, then running for their lives. Slovak here. I can't decide between 12 year of Robert Fico and Smer SD political party, or whole, age of Vladimir Misha. Skull Platforman. Recently the Swedish government spent well over 700 million krona, dollar sign 70 million on a digital system for high schools and it's pure crap. Not just inconvenient, it barely works. It's probably closer to 1 billion krona now since they've kept working on it the past 3 years instead of using Google Classroom, like every other reasonable school would. Yeah same here in Switzerland, where every canton has its own idea of how to do school IT, and our city has decided to spend way too much on some barely working, closed source privately developed, meaning the public doesn't even own the software, garbage. The baby bonus. In order to combat our declining birth rate the Australian government decided to give new parent $5,000 when they had a baby. This led to a huge wave of young teenagers having babies and dropping out of school to get a $5,000 payday. Of course most of them were totally unprepared to be parents and the novelty wore off real quick. The foster care and child services systems became overwhelmed. Thousands of kids are growing up in bad situations and wanted and unloved because the government didn't think it through properly. Adding to this is that it was funded by not one, not two, but three different resource booms. Pretty much the entirety of the Howard era government was vote buying off the backs of government asset sales and mining taxes. The internet in Germany is horrendous. I get mad just thinking about how they fricked up this bad. You couldn't even compare our internet infrastructure to the one of a third world country. We are behind by a lot. Yeah it's pretty bad in many places. Australia seems to have it the worst but even here in the USA it's really hit or miss. In the area when I grew up to this day the fastest speed is 1.5 megabits per second. I moved into a suburb that had 25 mbps. Now in my area of my small butt town I somehow get 1050 megabits per second. I drive halfway across town and they are actually stuck with satellite or DSL. Financial crash in Iceland in 2008. The banks put our country's debt at over 7 times our GDP. It ruined so many lives and the aftermath is still felt by people who are still in debt or have lost their pensions. Banks also asked customers a week before the crash if they were interested in putting their pensions into some index fund or something. Don't really know the right word for it, and make it grow more. They knew what was happening and only used the money to save their asses. Our prime minister declared in a TV speech, God bless Iceland. Then the morning after, people saw their loans, pensions and everything just either skyrocket or disappear. If you ask people how it was, you'd seriously think they'd been at Verdun. People's lives were absolutely ruined, some beyond repair. Malaysia. So many but I'll just do the most recent COVID-19 frick up. Last year Malaysia was a leading example of managing the pandemic but the backdoor gov'd. Backdoor because quite a few MPs jumped ship from the democratically elected gov'd and formed another gov'd. Decided to hold by elections in the state of Sabah. And no standard SOPs were followed leading to a spike in cases. We were well on our way to single digit cases and today we have an average of 7k cases daily. I was scrolling to find this. It's madness. Well. I am from Kazakhstan. What can I say about my country's governmental freak ups? They renamed the name of the capital city into our president's name, Nur Sultan, and also named every major street and every city after the president as well. They have statues of this guy all over the country. Other than that everything as it goes in a post-Soviet country. Corruption from top to the bottom. Money decides everything. Government couldn't care less about the people. You know, old good bulls all around. Well, 
Let's just go with something that is recently got an apology. 2020 I believe, in the 1950s, children were sent away from their families and had been forbidden to speak our language and learning about our history. Their reason why they did that was to re-educated our people as model Danish citizens. P.S. This is about my homeland Greenland. Except for the Danish part this could have also been about Canada or Australia, or dozens of other colonized countries probably. Australia. Our government fricked up royally when it came to getting better internet. Billions of taxpayers money down the fricking drain. Murdoch is also a C for playing a part in this. I'd say in the big picture selling off the electrical grid was worse, especially the way it was done so that power generation is owned by billionaires, the transmission owned by the Chinese, and you buy the power from some billing company that provides no value added. Too many in Malaysia. XPM started a fund, which is contributed by the people, to build the nation but him and his family end up stealing from it to live a lavish lifestyle. Then there's rumor of his wife's involvement in the murder of a Mongolian woman where her body is disposed of with C4. Money laundering, blah blah blah. Worst part of this is the government end up being unable to prosecute him and now he has his own political party. I could begin writing a whole list, but I think the word grease is enough. Too bad most of my country's leaders are incompetent fricks. I just did a module in my politics class on the Greek economy and leaders. Wow your parliament sucks. <laughs> this year and last year there was a welfare scandal in my country, the Netherlands. People who were on welfare were being accused of fraud and had their welfare taken away. The debts these people were getting in response of this was devastating. I don't know the full details, but it got so bad that our government stepped down. While this is indeed terrible, it's probably not the first thing I'd mention with regards to Dutch history. Brazilian here. There are many. I'll tell you two of the most bizarre ones. Back at 2015, while the country was entering one of the biggest economic crises on Brazilian history, our former president, Dilma Rousseff, gave 8 billion reais, about 1.5 billion dollars, to some Brazilian contractors to build things on many countries, except Brazil. The most recent one, our actual president, Jeb Bolsonaro, refused 100 million doses of Pfizer's COVID vaccine last year, told people to not use masks and said that people who stay at home to this day are idiots. Comma said that COVID vaccines will turn people to alligators. I already knew he was batshit insane, but bloody heck, that is some next level kind of crap. We, uh, lost a war with emus, yes. This was a real war, yes, it reached parliament, yes, this was approved by the minister of defense, yes, guns were used, yes, the birds avoided a tactical ambush, no, we don't like to talk about it. I'm Australian and the policy to remove half caste aboriginal children from their families and hand them to childless white foster parents in order to breed out their aboriginal heritage is pretty hard to ignore. Oh, and the fact that the government were prepared to concede all of the country above Sydney to Japanese invasion during World War II is pretty concerning as well. A more light-hearted one. Ireland legalized certain party drugs for like one day by mistake that is ecstasy MDMA and it will go down as one of the greatest days in our history. New Zealand. The breaches of the Treaty of Waitangi, using Maori slavery as a means to an end, in military action despite being outlawed. Last Maori slaves died in the 1950s. The dawn raids in the 1970s and 80s when police would do late night early morning raids to crack down on illegal overstayers. 200 years of trying to wipe out the Maori spoken language Tiwio, despite becoming an official language of New Zealand in 1987. A speaker at a ratepayers alliance meeting in Taranga was abused by the crowd for speaking six words in Tiwio this week. Colonization of Western Samoa after World War I so authoritarian and racist they wanted the Germans to come back. The race is 10 pounds, equivalent to $1,750 NZD in 2020. Poll tax to restrict Chinese immigration. Only one Chinese was allocated per 10 ton of cargo. In 1896 the ratio was changed to one Chinese per 200 ton of cargo, and the poll tax was raised to 100 pounds, 20,000 dollars. 
I would say when we built the biggest and most bad butt ship in the world and it sunk on its maiden voyage. Or maybe when we fished it up and put it in a museum so everyone can witness our epic failure. IT obviously were room for both of them and she let him drown. As a Scott it has to be the Darien scheme. Let's set up a colony in the jungle, in an area contested by the English and the Spanish. What could possibly go wrong? Apart from abject failure bankrupting the backers to a degree that led to the act of union leading to the creation of Great Britain. Also, please note that the Darien is still impassable to this day. The Pan American Highway was supposed to go all the way from Alaska to Tierra del Fuego, in Chile. But they still haven't found a way to cross the Darien. In Sri Lanka the biggest governmental frick is giving up control to port city Colombo to China, gotta start learning Mandarin I guess. I went with the 2pm thing, but honestly this is probably worse. So in Norway we are weird look on climate change, as we are a driving force for the Paris Agreement and is therefore looked upon as a great inspiration, mitigating climate change on a great level, but we still have some frick ups in our own nature. With a loud dumping of mining waste in our fjords, still look for oil and gas in the vulnerable north and we don't look for another way of earning funds for our pension program. The biggest difference made in Norway to help mitigate climate change is just as big a difference as any other first world country. Honestly we just believe we're better without any proof due to this. Constantly allowing them to be bought out to build more coal mines and destroying ecosystems and becoming the country with the highest species extinction rate, over 100 species each year. We are literally owned by the mining industry. The government is just puppets pretending to be politicians. Then the amount of control Murdoch press has they brainwash the majority of the population. Then not to mention we are the only western country that doesn't have a bill of human rights. Australia. The whole 50 plus years since independence there was only one party that constantly held power. We are economically ill prepared to face COVID because of decades of corruption. Even better yet, our south neighboring country, Singapore, is heaps and bounds ahead of us despite their small country not having even a slight fraction of the metric fuckton of natural resources like oil our country is blessed with. So yes, this is what I call cancer. The Vietnam War. It was a war where those who were in charge wanted to test a largely academically and theoretical set of standards of a less equipped, faster moving specialist type of soldifying non-conventional warfare with guerrilla tactics. Rather than admit that they underestimated the size of the Viet Cong, they kept plugging ahead with an agenda that bordered on insanity. Hills were taken with the hope that they would hold a high ground advantage, and then given up a few days after taking possession of it. We had entered an agreement to not go into adjoining adjacent countries, and although we did, the fighting forces used to track the supply lines were far too few to affect any real tactical advantage. General Westmoreland, the commanding general of the war was blinded by his own ego, and much like those who have power, but lack common sense. He would rather keep moving forward with misguided plan after misguided plan rather than admit he didn't know how to fight this type of war. In short, we relied on intelligence from a variety of sources, some of whom were double agents for the Viet Cong. They all looked and spoke alike, and it was impossible to tell who was who, except for the uniforms that men didn't wear, with ambiguous policies about what the midpoint goals were, and not having a clear agenda. It turned into a war of loosely bound leadership trying to fight with limited troops on a war with so many individual battles and not a front like you'd have unconventional. World War 2. Warfare. Issues. 1. Lack of troop numbers. Purposeful misrepresentation of our positional force size and who they were it wasn't just Vietnamese. Factions in Laos, Cambodia, Thailand were also contributors to the support of the North Vietnamese efforts. 2. Lack of the warfare technology and sufficient size and numbers that could have made a difference. 3. An unclear agenda the domino effect of country after country falling to communism and we need to defeat communism okay where? How? Who? 4. A US. Congress government that suffered from infighting and a lack of unity. 5. Troops too lightly armed being made to find. Literal, underground armies who had trenches and tunnels dating back to the French occupation of the area. French Indochina. By the time the US got there, they had underground supply tunnels, hospitals, troop movement trails, 
and hordes of supporting people. Side note, if you want to see how it ended, go to YouTube and watch the videos by searching the last days of Vietnam War, the fall of Saigon, and US Embassy evacuation Vietnam to see how people who helped the US troops and those who were in danger of being killed by the Viet Cong were trying to get out of Vietnam desperately as marine helicopters landed on the roof of the US Embassy picking up 8-10 people at a time. It's a very surreal sight. The Ken Burns documentary was very enlightening. As a Canadian it's got to be government treatment of our indigenous people. The list of things done is endless. But most egregious was probably the residential schools where abducted children were taken to get abused and have their culture erased. Thousands died at the schools and records were very incomplete so entire generations were devastated without even the closure of being informed their child had died. The abuses are unbelievable to me. They were a basic reality to those who lived it. Letting the Catholic Church have free reign on society for as long as it did and messing us up for hundreds of years. Sexual abuse, torture, taking babies from their mothers, selling them abroad, starving them, burying them in mass and marked graves around the country and not telling anybody, not being allowed to divorce until the 90s, sex education and schools based on a system of shame and oppression, encouraging a system of segregation and othering in communities. Just a few examples. I am from Zimbabwe, I have no idea where to start. There are truly horrific stories, hilarious ones, unbelievable ones or completely over the top ones, that no one in a million years could even imagine that crap. I mean, we had a president that said the economy is going bad, so we'll commandeer everyone's savings accounts to help with debt, which is the reason that my mom doesn't really believe in banks to this day, and does most of her financial stuff with actual printed money. But I think the worst frick up was saying that China is responsible for the pandemic, and it's all their fault, while they are our main supplier of vaccines. After the pandemic is really with, we might investigate if that's true, or say it, but right now he's biting the hand that feeds while crapping on the food and giving you the finger. The country is Brazil, BTW, if someone was curious. I am from Argentina, here was the same. People lost all their savings and the economy just collapsed. We made the president resigns and had 5 different presidents in one week. My aunt lost around 500 US dollars. People don't trust the financial system anymore. Poland and Librem veto, giving nobility the right to break and cancel debates are the same. For everyone wondering everyone just paid Polish nobility to use Librem veto and break the debates to their advantage. Electing a TV star, draft dodger, tax evader, pro-Russian oligarch puppet to president, in a time of war, and also Chernobyl. It's difficult to choose one of those two events. Ukraine out. The funny thing is that I read the first paragraph and thought you meant Trump. War on drugs. Went from federally funded rehab to smuggling sea into Colombia to fight the Soviets in Afghanistan. House prices are beyond crazy for what you get. You are being charged 1000 euros plus to live in someone's shed in the middle of nowhere. Investment funds are buying up entire housing estates ensuring young people may never own a home. Infrastructure and development outside the capital is poor compared to the capital city, which has resulted in a competitive job market. Mental health services are completely overburdened and underfunded. Our court system is a joke where violent offenders have been given hundreds of chances while drug offenses have received the opposite. I know the question what was the biggest frick up, but honestly there's just so many to choose from. BTW, guess which country in Western Europe I'm talking about. Not country but municipal government. They decided it would be a good idea to dump chicken manure all over a homeless camp to deter them. It was a horrible, embarrassing thing to do to other humans and obviously made the city smell like literal crap. Promising a referendum on EU membership just to win over right-leaning voters for an upcoming general election on the assumption that people wouldn't actually vote to leave the EU. Our government fricked up by giving us an opportunity to shoot ourselves in the foot. We fricked up by taking it. In Ireland in 2015 we accidentally legalized ecstasy, crystal M and ketamine. A legal loophole meant that you could not be arrested for possession until a new legislation is passed. It meant a lot of class A drugs were legal for 24 hours. 
Remember when a bunch of states decided to secede from the union because a president was infringing on their state right to kidnap, sell, purchase, breed, and hold human slaves, starting a five year war, costing over 700,000 lives? Classic. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.